What's good YouTube? This is Al B and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up the Akai MPK Mini MK3 with FL Studio. Now if you're familiar with my MK2 template, don't be too quick. The MK3 template is a little bit different in that it actually does more. The joystick is still going to control your modulation and your pitch bend. You'll be able to tap out your drums with the drum pads and have MIDI data separate right in FL Studio without having to fuss with the FPC. This does not use the FPC. This way you have your MIDI data separate and it really helps when it's time to arrange your beat. You're going to also be able to use the pads to change what instrument or what channel your keys are controlling. So if you're playing an instrument on channel one and you lay down an eight bar melody, you can press pad two and switch to the second instrument in channel two and play a counter melody. Then you can go back and lay your drums down on top of those melodies all without having to touch FL Studio, all from the controller interface, okay? You're also going to be able to use the pads for play and pause, for stop, record, fast forward, rewind, switching between pattern mode and song mode. You're going to be able to do everything, okay? Your knobs can also do a lot. Pretty much anything that you can automate in FL Studio or in a third party VST in FL Studio, you're going to be able to automate that with these knobs, okay? I'm going to show you guys how to set all of that up. You have to make sure you stick through the whole video. There are a few steps to it, but if you watch the video through, you should not have any issues. I've taken a good bit of time trying to get this, get this going smooth for you guys. So just make sure you watch the video and then you can hit me up with any questions you might have, okay? I'm gonna hop into FL Studio. I'm gonna show you guys how it works. And then I'm gonna show you how to get it set up at home. So just stick with me, make sure you watch it to the end and then you should be good to go. All right, guys. This is Al B. Let's get into it. Yes, sir. All right, guys, I wanted to start with an overview of how this template even works in the end state. And that way you guys can understand why it's worth taking the time to get set up. That way you can make full functionality out of this control and everything it was intended to do. And you can do it with FL Studio. OK, so. Looking at this on the left hand side, we have our joystick, which is really the modulation wheel and the pitch bend in one. Going up and down is modulation, going left and right is pitch bend. Let's use pigments as an example. All right, so there I was controlling my modulation and my pitch, okay? When I come over to the pads, the pads can do a lot of different things. They have three main functions. The first one is to be able to tap out my drums like a traditional MPC or any other drum machine. In the case of FL Studio, pad one will trigger channel one, pad two will trigger channel two, pad three will trigger channel three, so forth and so on. Let me show you. That way you can tap out your drums. You can still have your MIDI data actually separate in FL Studio as well as still having your drums on separate channels, which is different from the FPC method that most people will show you. This does not use the FPC. You still have MIDI data separate and a lot of control. The second thing that the pads can do is they can actually select what channel your keys are controlling, what channel or what VST your keys are controlling. So if I go to program change mode, and let's just say right now in my channel rack in FL Studio, I have channel one selected, but I'm in the middle of recording and I'm vibing out and I wanna actually change and I wanna play some instruments. So let me play channel seven where pigments is. Let me count and make sure. Channel one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if I'm playing and I wanna to go to the seventh instrument, I just press pad seven, boom. <laughs> And now I'm playing pad seven. And that's how you can change what VST you're playing while you're playing. So with what I just showed you, right, you could be playing a, a loop, an eight bar loop, lay down a melody, go back, lay down your drums. You can switch to a different instrument and lay a counter melody all without having to touch FL Studio, all from the mini MK3 controller. The third thing that these pads can do is actually when you enable CC mode, you can play and pause with pad one. You can stop with pad two. 
You can enable and disable recording with pad three. You can rewind with pad five. You can fast forward with pad six and pad seven does pattern mode and song mode. It changes between the two. Your rightmost pad on the far right will be used to go up. See that in the channel rack and to go down in the channel rack. So pad eight goes up, pad four goes down while you're in CC mode. Okay, so that's helpful to navigate through your different channels. So let's show you just, just so you can see it. Pad one, now pad two to stop. Okay. Now I can use pad three to enable and disable record. You see that there? I can use pad five to rewind. If you look at my playlist there, I can use pad six to fast forward. You can hold it or tap it. When I go to pad seven, it goes between pattern and song mode. And again, pad four and pad eight go up and down in the channel rack. So I can navigate between there. So those are the different things that you can do with that and all while your keys are still working. When it comes to the knobs, pretty much anything you can control in FL Studio or in any third party plugins and VSTs that you have in FL Studio. If you can control it there, you can control it with these knobs. Today, I'm using my two knobs to control thermal, which is a VST by output. And what I'm doing today as an example is I have knob five controlling the dreamy grit effect, the red knob that you see there. And I have knob six controlling the lo-fi effect, which is the yellow knob on the screen. You see that? So if I'm playing, So with that, I can control almost anything. Today, that's just my example, but you can use it to control the mix level of a plugin in FL Studio. You can use it to control a volume knob. You can use it to control panning, or you can use it to control the wet and dry signal of any effect. So you really can do almost anything, like I said, that you can do in FL Studio or in a third-party plugin, you can do with the knob. And I'll show you guys how to set that up as well. So there you have it, guys, a very high level overview. And just think about all these things in a loop recording fashion and just think about how much of a better workflow that's going to be for you. All right. Now that you guys have seen how this works as an overview, I wanted to show you a live demo of me using this. So I'm not going to do as much talking. So kind of watch what I'm doing and watch what's happening in FL Studio. I'm going to just work on a little eight bar, little eight bar loop. And let's just see what we can come up with. OK, so let me make sure I'm in pattern mode and recording is enabled and let's go. So you guys can see how you can really start to build your beat without having to touch FL Studio at all. My automation was also recorded with my knob. So everything is just at your fingertips, literally. All right. So let's get into how you actually set this up and be sure you guys watch this part all the way through. It's going to make sure you have no issues when you set this up. So let's get into it. Number one, you need to go ahead and register your controller at akaipro.com. 
sign in or make an account if you don't have one and then register the controller. And under my registered products, you'll see where you can download the MPK Mini 3 software, run through that install, get that set up and going, and then I'll show you guys how to access the mini editor, okay? You're gonna also need to download the This Is Out B template. I'm going to include a link in the description where you can download it. Now that we got that out of the way, let's actually get into how to set this up. Once you're done um, installing uh, the MPK Mini software, you have to actually go and enable Show Advanced Software and come back out and then now you can see the MPK editor that we're gonna need to apply this template. So let's go ahead and download the MPK editor here. And once you have downloaded the MPK editor app, you want to actually install it. Now I'm going to actually go ahead and open that. Voila, the MPK mini MK3 editor. Go ahead and unzip the folder that you downloaded, the This Is Out B template. You need it to be unzipped so that you can open the specific template program. Go to File, Open Program and navigate to wherever you saved. Yours should be called fl20-lb.mpkmini3. You're gonna open that. Once you have the program loaded, you're gonna know you have my program loaded because it's gonna say fl20-lb. Okay, and that's how you know that you've actually loaded my program. You can later change this to say whatever you want it to say, and that's what will show up on the MPK Mini screen. So if you wanted to say, you know, like I might do LB beats. It'll show that on my OLED screen when I'm using this program. But for now, we're gonna keep it as fl 20 lb and that way you guys know that this is the right template. Don't worry about what's in here. This is just for demonstration purposes. Uh, a lot of these numbers are going to end up changing. Um, a lot of these things change in my template, so don't worry about that. But you're gonna know you have the right program when you have fl 20 lb Make sure when you're doing this as well that you do not have FL Studio or any other application that might be trying to use MIDI data. Make sure that they're all closed because it will not work right if you have that. You won't be able to push and things. Once you know you have the fl 20 lb template loaded, you're gonna to go to four and you're gonna do a send. Your MPK Mini itself should blink really quickly and you should see a send success. Program has been sent successfully to the device, okay. Now we're going to send to RAM. Program has been sent successfully to the device. OK, so to make sure that you actually push this to the keyboard itself, remember, we sent it to program number four. So to select that program on your MPK mini, you're going to press the program select button and you're going to hit pad four and you will see pad four blink. The next thing you should see is that the OLED screen displays fl 20 lb Now you know that you've actually loaded the program onto the, the keyboard. So first we pushed it to program four and then you actually enabled program four. So we should be good here. Let's exit out and go to FL Studio. Make sure you actually exit out. To set this up in FL Studio, you're gonna open it up Go to MIDI settings or press F10. MPK Mini 3, make sure that's selected for the output. MPK Mini 3, make sure that's selected for the input. Make sure the keyboard is enabled by actually clicking the enable button and you should see a green power icon light up in the input section. Make sure your controller type is set to M Audio Oxygen 49. Nothing on the port numbers. Omni Preview MIDI channel, set that to 10, okay? Then you should be good to go in here. Let's just double check that we actually apply the template and that it's working like it should. The first thing you wanna double check is your joystick. When I move my joystick up and down or left and right, I should see an orange check mark in the top left side. There it is, cool. Um, if I move it left and right, I should see an orange check mark as well. And you can even see the sense change. That's how you know you're changing your, your pitch. So let's double check that the modulation wheel is actually working. I'm going to use pigments in my example today. I'm going to open up the instance of pigments. And in pigments here, I'm going to move it and let's see. So in this, in this case of pigments, I have the modulation wheel assigned to filter one. What I'm showing you here is that the modulation is actually happening. 
So that is proves the modulation wheel is working. If you don't have a VST to test and you want to double check, go to options, go to debugging log and move your modulation wheel up and down. And you should see modulation wheel handled by first chance. And that's how you know that it's actually uh, FL Studio is sensing the modulation wheel, right? Based on how the template works and it's sending the right information to FL Studio, which then sends the right information to uh, whatever VST you have selected. In my case, I have pigments. It'll do it there. If I go to another VST, uh, it'll it'll do it there as well. So in this example, I'm going to go to VIP and the modulation wheel is already set. I don't have to do anything in here. I also didn't do anything in pigments. My VSTs are automatically picking this up. So modulation is set. It works. That's two examples. Again, if you're not sure, you can go check options, debugging log, and you should see when you move your modulation wheel, you should see control change modulation wheel handled by first chance. All right. So now the modulation wheel is working. Let's check the pads. OK, let's try it. Pad one should trigger channel one. Pad two triggers channel two, pad three, pad four. All right, guys, so my pads trigger my first 16 channels and I can tap out a drum beat. You can do your thing just like you got a classic drum machine or like you got a classic NPC. So now let's talk about how you can use your drum pads to actually change what VST your keys are playing. The way this template is set up, your keys will play whatever instrument you have highlighted in your channel selector. Okay. So what I'm going to show you is how to change what channel is selected with just the pads. The first thing you got to do is enable program change. And now pad one will tell FL studio to move to channel one, pad two moves it to channel two, pad three, four, five, six, so on and so forth. So in my case, if I'm playing my sixth channel, which is my first pigments instance in my channel rack, and say I'm loop recording and I want to come back on top of that melody and play the next instrument, hit pad seven. This is a really good way to get down an eight bar loop and get started. Play a melody while it's looping, start playing some drums on top of it, right? And then you can start playing instruments as well without having to touch FL Studio, guys. This is how you loop record. This is how you're going to get it done here. The next thing we're going to talk about is how to use these knobs to their full potential, how you can control things in FL Studio and in the VSTs in FL Studio. Let's go. OK, now that we have the joystick working, we have the drum pads working. I'm going to now move on to the knobs. I'm going to be using knob one as an example. So an easy example of how to use these knobs. Initially, it won't be recognized by FL Studio, but my template is set up to push it in a way that you can configure in FL Studio. If I move a knob, it should not do anything um, yet. You should see a green question mark in the top left when you move a knob. OK, that means that FL Studio is receiving a MIDI signal, but you haven't told it what you want to do with it yet. In my case, I'm going to go to pigments. I have a thermal FX plugin loaded from output. Shout out to output. I'm going to change my mix level, my mix level, my dry and wet mix level on the channel rack. So let me do a right click on that knob and do a link to controller. All I'm going to do is move knob one and it, that that pop up disappears. And that's how I know it picked it up. And if you look closely, you can now see that my knob change is changing what thermals mix and dry level is. Voila. And you also know it's being recognized because if I look in the top left, of the screen in the hint bar, I can see a orange check mark letting me know that FL Studio recognizes the MIDI and knows what to do with it. So my knob is there. That's how you can assign the knob very easily to direct FL Studio parameters. Now, to do this for other VSTs and go deeper inside does require a few more steps. So if I want to use knob five down here, let me go show you how you would do that on a VST. 
So let's say I wanted knob five to change something here. I'm going to use thermal as well for this example. So what you do is you go over to the left in your in your browser and you go to current project. You go to effects because we're trying to change something that is a mixer effect and we have to find thermal on pigments thermal pigments boom I open up thermal pigments so this is the thermal effect applied to my pigments channel and that's how I know it's the same one right here you can see thermal pigments and now all I do is move this knob and when I move the knob that I want to control so you move the knob inside the VST inside the software and then over here in the browser it would highlight what that knob is in my case this knob ties to macro one so macro one, let me do lo fi. Let me see what this one is. This one's macro two. So I want to assign knob five to the dreamy grit effect, which is macro one. When I move it, macro one is highlighted. Right click on the parameter and go to link to controller. And when you go to change knob five, because we have auto detect on, boom, it picks it up and you can see now knob five controls the dreamy grit. Let's repeat that. So I want to control lo-fi effects. I want to control this knob in my VST with knob six on my controller. So let me go back over here to current project, go to effects, and I need to find thermal pigments. And I remember it being macro two, but let's just show you how you find it again. Sometimes it bugs out and you might have to like play with a couple knobs before it'll show you what it is, but you should be able to move the knob and it shows you what parameter over here you, that you're moving. I want lo-fi effects to be controlled by knob six, move lo-fi effects. It tells me that it's macro two. right click link to controller. Now let me turn knob six. Voila. So now I have this to control that and I have knob five to control dreamy grit. All right, guys, now I'm going to show you how to use the pads for play and pause and for stop and record and all of the different transport controls at the top of FL Studio. OK, guys, so the first thing you want to do is make sure your pad controls are in CC mode. And with this template, pad one is going to be play. Um, yeah, yeah. All right. Pad two is going to be stop. Pad three enables record, disables record. Pad five rewind okay pad six will be fast forward pad seven will change whether you're in pattern or song mode and pad eight will go up and down inside of your channel rack with channel four it's a little tricky going through all these pads but the, you get the picture right play pause right stop record rewind fast forward pattern song mode channel rack up channel rack down cc mode all right all right guys that's it i hope you found it helpful drop a comment let me know what you think about the template let me know if it's actually helped your workflow all right guys until next time this is al b and we are out yes sir